Hello, welcome to part 4 of Database Design Made Easy. And in this part I will explain everything you need to know about third normal form. Now the requirements for third normal form are in a way similar to those for second normal form in that it starts with already being in the previous normal form. So a third normal form table always requires that the table is already in second normal form. Check that first. And then the next check you have to do is that no non-key column can depend on any non-key column or a combination of columns that is not a key. Now the left hand side of that sentence is quite straightforward. No non-key column can depend. So for the dependent column you only have to check columns that are not included in any candidate key. However, the right hand side is more complex than it might seem and we will work through that later. But the short form is for the determining column, the column that determines the other column in a functional dependency, you cannot exclude key columns. You can only exclude some cases. We will return to that, but let's start by a simple example that just shows the basics. Let's return to our example of uh, a, a technical conference again. But now we are looking at a table that is used as part of the reimbursement of travel cost. So for each session we have written down what country the speaker travels in from and the name of that speaker. This is in first normal form because within this universe of this course we have uh, established that there is no need to split the speaker into first name and last name and middle initial and whatever other complexities can come with that. Speaker is just an atomic value for this universe of discourse. Country is an atomic value too. Session is an atomic value. And to check that it's in first normal form we also need to know that there is at least one key. So looking at the functional dependencies we see that both the country column and the speaker column depend on the session. Give me a session code and I can give you exactly one country and exactly one speaker or perhaps none if the session code does not exist but never more than one. So since all other columns depend on session, session is one of the candidate keys in this table. In fact, the only as we will see later. So let's check the rest of the possible functional dependencies. The reverse of the two you uh, listed are not true. Session does not depend on country. You can already see that in the sample data. Um, the country Germany, if you t t give me the country Germany, I cannot give you a single session because there are two different sessions, both given for, by someone traveling in from Germany. Speaker also does not determine the session. Just look again in the sample data at Alan Mitchell, who delivers two sessions. So give me that name. I cannot give you a single session. This is not a functional dependency. The combination of country and speaker also does not determine the session. And once more, you can see that in the sample data because give me the combination United Kingdom Alan Mitchell. And I still have the problem that I can give you two sessions. So this is not a functional dependency. Now, this is not all we need to check. We also need to check between the country and speaker columns uh, and each other. So does the country determine the speaker? Well, no. Again, look at the sample data. Give me a country, Germany, and I cannot give you a single speaker because both Oliver Engels and Uwe Rieken are traveling in from Germany. No functional dependency. But the reverse, now we have a functional dependency. This is already supported by the sample data. Now, that doesn't always mean that it is a functional dependency. The sample data might be uh, might not illustrate everything. But if we check with the organization, we will find that indeed a speaker cannot travel in from multiple countries for this single uh, conference. So give me a speaker name and there should always be at most one country that he or she travels in from. That is a functional dependency. 
And now we have a non-key column, country, which depends on another non-key column, speaker. A violation of third normal form. This table is not properly normalized. Now, why is that bad? Because we really want our database to protect our data from violations of business rules. This table doesn't do that. Someone can update a row and now Alan Mitchell travels in from the United Kingdom for session BI205, but he also travels in from Sweden from BI321. And we already established the organization is not okay with that. This violates a business rule, but the database allows it. Ideally, the database would prevent that. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that we move towards third normal form. Now, just as in our previous video with second normal for violations, the best way to do this is to start with the offending functional dependency. Speaker determines country. Those two columns, in this case, it could have been more if there was a more complex functional dependency, but in this case, those two columns need to go into a table of their own with speaker and country. Now, we already know that speaker determines country and that means it determines all other columns in the table, so it's a candidate key. We also already established that country does not determine the speaker in our universe of discourse. So, um, uh, this is not a candidate key. And this table is now fully normalized up to at least third normal form. First normal form because all columns are atomic and there is a key. Second normal form because nothing depends on a subset of a key. There cannot even be a subset of a key with a single key column. And third normal form because the only non-key column does not depend on anything that is not a key already. Now because we have those two columns in a new table, we do not need to store the country in our original table anymore. We can always reconstruct this data in this form with a join. But we don't need to store it redundant, uh, redundant anymore. So we can remove the country column. And now the table on the left is also quite trivially fully normalized up to third normal form. And this is the correct database design for this specific universe of discourse. Now this was a simple example where a non-key column depends on one non-key column. But a third normal form violation can also take the form of a non-key column that depends on a combination of multiple non-key columns. For instance, and this is a more abstract example, we have five columns, very ingeniously labeled column one through column five. And we established that there is a candidate key on the combination of column one and column two. So there are, of course, the functional dependencies of each of column three, column four and column five, depending on that combination. But we find that there is also a functional dependency where the combination column 3 and column 4 determines column 5. This violates third normal form. Remember, we have only this functional dependency, so we cannot simply add a candidate key on column 3 and column 4. That would require that column 1 and column 2 also depend on this combination, which they don't. So this is actually a violation of third normal form, and we need to fix that the same way we fixed it before, by creating in this case a table with column three, column four, and column five, and then removing column five from the original table. So that is an example where a non-key column depends on a combination of non-key columns. But those are not the only cases you need to check. You cannot ignore key columns, or rather columns that are part of a key, because a third normal form violation can also take the form of a non-key that depends on a combination of key columns from different keys, but the combination itself is not a key or a subset of a key. How so? Well, let's look at an example. Again, we have five columns and now there are two candidate keys. So obviously we have all the dependencies you expect of column three, column four, and column five, each depending on column one and column two, and column one, column two, and column five 
all depending on column three and column four. I won't write those down on the slide anymore, but there's one more functional dependency. To wit, column five is determined by the combination of column two and column three. Both are key columns, but they are not part of the same key. So here we have an issue. Again, we cannot add an extra key because it's only column five that uh, depends on column two and column three. Column one and column four do not depend on it, so there is no key on column two and column three. But there is a dependency of column five on that combination. And even though column two and column three are each part of a key, the combination column two, column three is not a key. So the non-key column, column five, depends on a non-key combination, column two, column three, which violates third normal form. Once more, we have to create a table with the offending, with the columns from the offending functional dependency and can then remove the now redundant column five from the left table. And then there is also the case where a non-key column depends on a combination of at least one non-key column plus at least one subset of a key. Let's illustrate it again. We have a table with six columns in this case. And now the combination of column four and column six determines column five. As you see, this combination is not a key. It includes one column that's part of a key and one column that is not, but the combination is not a key and it still determines a non-key column, which violates third normal form. So the correct solution is again to create a new table and remove column five from this table. The only situation you do not need to check for third normal form is where, whether a non-key column depends on one or more co key columns that are all subset of the same key. Why do we not have to check that? Well, because we already did. This would be a violation of second normal form that we already checked, because the first requirement of third normal form is we are already in second normal form. No need to check it again unless you are highly insecure. So remember, third normal form is achieved by having the table in second normal form already and then making sure that no non-key column depends on any non-key column or any non-key combination of columns. And this is dependent on the universe of this course. If our conference has unlimited budget and allows a speaker to travel back home in between sessions, then it might be possible that I travel in from the Netherlands first, because I come from home. Then after my first session, I go to France to work on an assignment. And two days later, I travel back in from France for my second session. In this other scenario where we have unlimited budget apparently and can afford to reimburse those travel costs, it would be valid for a single speaker to travel in from multiple countries for multiple uh, sessions and the original design would not have violated third normal form. But again, the, the uh, universe of discourse dependency is incorporated in the functional dependencies. Once you have those functional dependencies, you can just apply the rules. Now, a lot of people will tell you third normal form is all you need. I disagree. And I hope you will too after seeing the rest of the videos in this series where I will talk about all the higher normal forms and why most of them, perhaps not all, but most of them are very relevant. However, I do agree that third normal form is absolutely the basic and it is very important that you really understand third normal form. And there is a mnemonic that has been going around in academic circles for as long as this exists. All non-key columns must depend on the key. That is first normal form. The table has to have a key. All non-key columns must depend on the whole key. That is second normal form. A non-key column cannot depend on a subset of a key. And all non-key columns must depend on nothing but the key. Third normal form. A non-key column cannot depend on a column or combination of columns that is not a key. 
So there we have it, the mnemonic. All non-key columns must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key, so help me card. That was how I recalled it when I was taught this first, and how many others recall it. Feel free to use it as well. By the way, thanks to MJ's, Michael J. Swart for the excellent illustration he made uh, for me and allowed me to use. Again, just as with the previous normal forms, the third normal form requirement is defined at the table level. For your data model to be in third normal form, every table must be in at least third normal form. That is always the case with all normal forms. The data model is always in the lowest normal forms of all the tables in that data model. And that is it. That was the third normal form. In the next video, which I hope to release the end of February 2024, I am going to talk about Boyce Card normal form. You might have expected fourth normal form, but no, that will be later. First, I need to explain Boyce Card normal form, and that will happen late February 2024. As always, if you don't want to wait that long, feel free to check out my Pluralsight course, which is almost eight hours long, provides in-depth coverage including a method to, vary in a, to find in a very structured way all the functional dependencies and be almost 100% sure that you get it right. That was it. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Please do not forget to return. I hope to see you again for my next video. Thanks for watching. My name is Hugo Cornelis. Goodbye.